Um, <laughs> you got newsprint all over your fingers as usual. Yep, it must yep, be yep. Thursday. Well, I, I, I've only got newsprint all over my fingers because there's nothing in the pop press. Come on. You got a record set up? Because there's nothing in the pop. I don't know why it is. I mean, obviously, there's stuff in it. There's like g groups playing in Croydon and all that sort of thing. You know, lists of things, little bits of news, records coming out. But nothing that's really. Because obviously, I turn the pages and you try and find. Ah, that's rather amusing. Oh, that's worth commenting on. I kept turning and turning. Nothing. I've got all sorts of papers. I even found a paper from Dublin. Hot press. Oh, yeah. Somebody sent me through, but I thought it was perhaps something in this. It's, it's an interesting paper because it wasn't uh, at all all poppy, rocky. It's sort of events in Dublin. And obviously, if you live there, it's quite interesting. To the other people, I suppose, uh, not especially interesting, but quite a, quite an interesting paper. Uh, I did notice that I got a good new group name from Hot Press in Dublin. There's a good new group in Dublin called the Little Sisters of the Sacred Bed Set. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good name for a group. <laughs> so it's worthwhile. And then I, I even started to look around other papers, particularly I find obviously Private Eye. Yes. Don't play poker with Peter. Talk about a full house. <laughs> <laughs> I know you mentioned it last night, but if anybody wasn't listening, oh, Peter here, Peter Powell. All the Coleman balls, five of them, managed to get them all. It's amazing scenes. Like this thing, this sort of thing, yeah. This one is for uh, Nigel Addison. I went to school with a Nigel Addison. I wonder if it's his brother. No, Peter, <laughs> I don't think it is somehow, but he really scored. I saw Peter in the street, he had to laugh. I tickled him, that's why he had to laugh. No, 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 you could see the funny side of it. He didn't mind old Peter. Ooh, what? <laughs> but then I'm still combing away. A paper I thought had packed up at one stage. I used to write for it. That, that didn't make it packed up. But Zigzag. I became remember it's been around for years and years. Guess what time it is on in Zigzag? Poll time! As like it is in all the papers, it's poll time in Zigzag. So I opened it up. Is this good news for anybody? Hello. Bad news for Marilyn. Why? Second worst record. Calling your name Marilyn. <sighs> what was the first? Well, Black Lace. No surprise. Worst dressed person, second, Marilyn. I know. Who was the first? Boy George. Most hated person, second most hated <laughs> person, Marilyn. I know. Who was the first? Margaret Thatcher. I mean, he's already come second to Margaret Thatcher. He can't even win anything. <laughs> you know, he's not even... There, there he comes, body of the year. Go on. He comes third. <sighs> Marilyn comes third to first, not Mrs. Thatcher for a change, Manuela Zwingman of ex mal Deutschland, and then oh. Danielle Dax, that bird who, she had an album out, she used to be yeah. with a group called Lemon Kittens or something like that, a bit sort of arty, clever nonsense, but what else is in the polls? Polls are always interesting to people radio, like Radio, this. radio, radio. Yeah, yeah, radio, radio, radio. Never mind, never mind being Marilyn. Marilyn doesn't even beat uh, uh, um, Roland Rat as a favourite person, doesn't get anywhere. Roland Rat comes tenth. But when you look down, who I'd most like to see in Zigzag... Right at the bottom there is Limal with a brick in his face. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> at least that's not... Blimey, that's not to Marilyn, at least. Well, favourite person, you may say. Roland Rat, there they is. Let's have a look. Who is the favourite person? Radio? No, not radio. Just oh. favourite person in the world, you know. Oh. John Peel, number one. Number two, Billy Bragg. Number three, Nick Fiend. I said to Peel, I said, who's this bloke who's coming with me? Nick Fiend. He said... I don't know. He said, it must be one of the alien sex fiends, obviously. Mm, mm. And I said, wait a minute. Number five, Robert Smith. He's not one of the Smiths. Just shows yeah, you so. This. You no, no, don't apply the logic. But finally, we get down to radio show. The most important. Right. Number four. I just get it in just to make up for the um, um, private eye, obviously. But Peter Powell. Good know. old Peter. I don't know. He got in there. Just shows it. Well, he's got five listeners because they all wrote to Coleman for the start, so he must well, have Are they different people, then? Oh, obviously, yes, all different people, and they all voted in zigzag, and <laughs> Peter came forth. Third, Steve Wright, who's just got out of the studio. Don't know what he left, he's just got out. Number two... Go on. David Jensen! Oh, right. <laughs> Number one... John <laughs> Peel! Thank you! Thank you! OK, thank you! We don't have time for any more now! Thank you. Elvis has left the so, building. So tedious. But, really. oh, okay, but there's nothing else in the papers. So, well. so look, I turn the papers. Turn, turn, turn. I feel like Pete Seeger. Turn, <laughs> turn, turn. The video. The Stones have made a new video. Will it get banned? Well, they don't know. They're, They're hoping so. They're hoping so because they can go to number one. Produced by Julian Temple. Uh, clever dick, you know, Julian Temple. And it features Charlie Watts, it says, as a seedy booking agent. Is there a different sort of a booking agent? <laughs> the Stones as the Stones, and actress Anita Morris as the spectacular Miss Curvaceous. She's got a big bust, said a spokesman. And when she walks around, extraordinary things happen. Keith's playing guitar. She walks by, and his guitar explodes. There's another scene with a close-up of, close of a zipper popping, and when Ronnie's taking his temperature, she walks by, and the thermometer explodes. Wow, what a great idea. Now, why didn't somebody think of that before? They did. 
when she walks by, the men folk don't... Girl can't, can't help, help it. it. The girl well, can't yes, help oh, it. see, they think we've all forgotten. There's some of us old enough to remember <laughs> that. Jane Mansfield walked by, <laughs> the milkman's glasses shatter. <laughs> the pints of milk foam over, they boil. Can't you remember that? I but, remember see, it. The, the same thing with Janice Long, watch down the th third floor corridor. Janice came Long, uh, glasses shatter. <laughs> same old thing. Yeah, exactly. What else is happening? Nothing. I turn the pages. Camden Palace, they're having a St. Valentine's Day ball. You've got to go dressed as Bonnie and Clyde. Now, which which is Michael's going to go dressed as? Still, <laughs> you'll be. Hang on, right. hold on, hold on, hold on. Twelve twelve pound fifty to get in. Ooh. You know Mike's natural sort of unfortunate disability of having short arms and low pockets. He, he ain't going to turn up for that. That's one night he won't be at the cabinet. <laughs> He'll be home, uh, Mrs. Hawks. Don't worry about that. St. <laughs> Valentine's night. You turn the papers. <laughs> and you look here. NME. NME are doing Valentine's. Valentine's in, in the NME. It used to be hip. What have we got there? See, of course, at least you'd expect them to be Valentine's for rock stars. And one here, the first one I notice is to Bono. Sounds like a dog food, but it's somebody in U2, apparently, an old Bono. And this girl has said, Oh, to be near you, instead of far away. Wish I could swim that ocean which parts us, but I swear I'll be with you one day. That's from Linda Hurst in, in Rill, in North Wales. She gives her address, you see, in case Bono reads it and goes... <gasps> and immediately sets off, you know, he's <laughs> off to Rill, quick. But mind you, here's one I wish I'd given her address. Listen, to Gillian Bryan, and the fella says, gives a full name, Gillian Bryan with a Y, says, Oh, let me have the whole, all, all be mine, that shape, that fairness, that sweet mine, a zest of love, your kiss, those hands, those eyes divine, those warm, dark, lucent, million pleasured breasts. Garfield. <laughs> Garfield? <laughs> well, that's a cat. Mind you, I wouldn't... If only they put where she lived, I could have gone the phone book. <laughs> Got her up. Brian, Julian, ch -ch 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 turning the pages. <laughs> I mean, when you're my age, let's face it, you know, I mean, a million pleasured breasts, even one is not to be sniffed at. <laughs> I mean, in a manner of speaking. You know, <laughs> oh, dear me. But this is more typical. Cocteau twins. Here we go. Co Cocteau fans. To my little sugar hiccup. <laughs> Lots of love and kisses and bats and things from Incy Wincy. <laughs> 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 and the next one I noticed is Jan still top of the pops. How about that D telegraph for the next message? Love you, gorgeous Tink. Is the enemy? <laughs> what this is implying is the D telegraph is where all these smarmy people with more money than sense announce their engagements. That's what he's saying. Mm. Who is it who reads the NME, and... signs himself Tink, and reads the D telegraph? <laughs> What's happened to this country? What has happened? Where's there a lighthouse I could buy and just. Wait a minute. Then you notice, here's somebody we know. Guess who this is, eh? Flabby thighs. Don't guess yet. Wait a minute. Flabby thighs. I am a greedy pig. Love old bald patch. Now, oh, who oh, would oh. sign it, a greedy pig? Bald patch? Uh, not... Peely, yes. that must be him. There it is in the enemy. Have you seen his thighs? They Flabby are thighs. a little bit large. They flap about, mate. <laughs> what? When the wind gets up, it's like a... what? String of washing. What? <laughs> flap, 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 flap. He's thighs again. Well, I shall have that out with him tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow necessarily, because I think he's not on the air tomorrow. He's gone to Scotland. Ah, oh, well, let's get back to the music businesses. Does the spirit of love carry on into the uh, reviews in the Melody Maker? <gasps> no. Hello. Christine McVie, album review. A sticker on the front cover proclaims member of Fleetwood Mac, which is as good a reason as not as any not to buy this album. <gasps> <laughs> That's not the spirit of Valentine's Day. But they get a bit more positive. That was Michael Oldfield. Steve Sutherland has something more to say about James King and the Lone Wolves. Not a, a name specially known to me. Certainly seems to have popped up. And he says, too hot to handle? What reasons bar his infamous savagery and record company's customary cowardice could have conspired to keep the mighty James King from staking his rightful claim to fame? Ooh, the legend lives! He finishes up. That's the end. It's not exactly an album. It's a sort of maxi-single thing. Well, there you go. That's something positive. Then you think, is this... OK, is it not OK? You can't always tell whether they're being praising or giving them wax. First, it looks like wax. This is Colin Irwin with the Simple Minds album. And he says, The sleeve design is appalling. It depicts a crude shield banked by battlements and stumbling across it in woolies. You could be forgiven for assuming it was a music for pleasure production of Camelot. Actually, that's true. <laughs> then he says, It's important to mention this point at the outset because it's the only mistake Simple Minds make during the entire record. Suddenly he gets very positive, you see. You think he's giving them wax. You see, when you read critics... Often, you're looking for wax, aren't you? You know, you think, this will be amusing, somebody who gets... Julie Birchall won't let you down. No Whoa! way! So let's finish with looking at a couple of singles reviews here. Singles in the enemy from Julie Birchall. Even when she's praising something, there's wax given out. I mean, here she's praising something. She's praising that Sade record, you know. That's I love like that, yeah. yeah. There you go. Julie likes it. How does she start? Whack! 
Behind every chanteuse in the land works an ill-sorted, mildly offensive black ethos to people like Carmel, Torch Drag Division, Helen Terry, Bluesy Belter Battalion, and Tracy, not so much white soul as anemic. This means giving totally gung-ho and giving it all you've got, which ranges from Miss Terry's wounded bull elephant roar through Carmel's God-fearing hand-clapping mantras to Miss Tracy's exhausting reedy squeak. And then she goes on to say, but sure day, totally different, she says. The perfect face, the perfect voice. Sure day, I do. The original walking miracle. It's going a bit far, but she whacks three people just to get to that point. Then she looks at what? Nainy, you just played it. We've just heard it on the show. 99 luft balloons, 99 red balloons. And she says about that it's blend of hippie naivety and pure plastic pogo beat. <coughs> Excuse me. It says a pleasing fossil. And my favourite foreign record since Shut Up Your Face. <laughs> <laughs> record for Italian cats everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes, <laughs> she goes on. Even look here, Hazel O'Connor. Statistics show that 99% of Hazel O'Connor records given as gifts at Christmas are in Battersea Dog Zone by New Year's Day. <laughs> it goes on to Gene October. Sounds like the B-side of That's Living All Right. Goes on to Bob Geldof, about as menacing as Muffin the Mule. Whack! Whack! <laughs> whack! It's all whacks with her. She, she manages to cluster them together, like, if you're standing there, whack the lot of you at one go. <laughs> and she pulls them together. The Alan Parsons Project, Dire Straits, Louise Tucker. Whack! She starts in. Now, she says, she gets into it. She's just the sort of things to keep in the freezer for those odd moments when you simply can't resist the temptation to flirt with death by boredom. The singer with the Alan Parsons Project has the kind of dull, dead, totally disinterested voice that you otherwise only ever hear from Nico and Carol Singers. Whack! <laughs> Louise Tucker stepped forward is apparently a classically trained Canadian, and the combination of the two is unutterably eye-glazing. A Canadian soporific. Whack! Hey! Oh. Hey! Wait sorry, a oh, sorry about that. <laughs> the, uh, you're almost Scottish, though. That's true. <laughs> well, you're mean enough. The wall-to-wall -wall <laughs> coma that is a dire straits record is here... The usual ragbag of Manuel and his music of the mountains, guitars, and the catatonic mumblings, mumblings of a sensitive... That sounded more like the guitars. Mumbling, mumbling, <laughs> mumblings of a sensitive corpse. Whack! She goes again. Finally, the train spotters. Hey, that's Reedy, isn't it? It's Reedy, and does she know it? Oh, boy. A Mike Reed record. You can feel her stepping forward, sort of one of those where the fist is swinging round and round, ready for the old whack. You know, she says. Lard face, lard face, 275 and 285, lard face, lard face, National Radio 1. Wolf Mad Jack, she says, must be turning in his lair when he's not strumming his banjo or crawling up Cliff Richard's inside leg measurement. The self-righteous blubber mountain. <laughs> I can read no more. <laughs> whack! She <laughs> goes on. Oh, Julie Burst, you're giving out the old wax. Well, look, let's get finish on something a bit more positive. Um, who's doing the singles in Melody Maker this week? Our old pal, I had lunch Our with him on Saturday. You had lunch with him, but I had lunch with him before. No? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Bragg is in there. He has a bit of a go at die straights, but, you know, he just says, you know, the song's OK. And is it dull? Oh, you betcha, says Billy. You know, he knows about it all right. He picks a th few things. The Pretenders says, if you like The Pretenders, you'll like this, but beware, people who stand in the middle of the road get run over. Nye Bevin. He's a bit of an intellectual, Billy. <laughs> I always thought... Probably it was Nye Bevin who said that, but people who stand in the middle of the road don't get run over. <laughs> people on the left or the right get run over. It's very strange. They often stand in the middle of the road. Uh, then he says of the Boomtown Rats, which Julie gave wax to, he says, this is just daytime radio stuff. <laughs> Billy, Billy, yes. be careful, be careful. This is early listen, on in his career. Brrr, listen, if any of the people who did daytime radio read The Melody Maker, or read anything, actually, he could be in serious trouble. So be very careful, Billy, you've got to be careful. Is there anything in this he has... Finally, of course, single of the week. James King and the Lone Wolves, again. And he says, um, it's shameful that if this group were from Macon, Georgia, they'd be hailed as the furniture of rock and roll or whatever. But as it is, they're from Glasgow and don't fit into the sound of young Scotland at all. And he goes on to say, give me that record off the deck. I think I'm going to steal it. And he picks it as single of the week, so as he's picked it and before he steals it, we better hear it. James King and the Lone Wolves, and that was Texas Lullaby, preceded by John Walters.